here's the big question. How is it that most entrepreneurs hustle and are always busy and struggle to take just one step forward only to fall two steps back? They're dedicated, determined, and driven, but only a few finally break through and win. This show uncovers those quantum leap patterns of highly successful people so you can simply model what they do and apply to your future success. That's the question, and the answers are right here. My name is Brigitte Höfele, and this is the Success Patterns Show. Happy Tuesday, everyone, as we are here every Tuesday, same time, same place. My name is Brigitte Höfele. I am the CEO and uh, of the Center of NLP located here in Atlanta, Georgia. I am the founder of the Success Patterns Movement, and it is Tuesday, and it is time to put the do in learn, do, teach. And that's what we're all about, because the quality of your success starts with your attitude towards it. Success is an interesting thing. I know you all think it. It's shaped by each individual success seeker, and it's not limited to one thing, and it's not limited to business, and it's not limited to personal, and it's not limited to only having success in one area. Success is modeled. It's modeled in patterns, in strategies, in behaviors, and with this, these patterns and strategies and behaviors, we can then decipher it. We can decode the patterns that led to success of our guest experts which we have great experts every week. So you at home or wherever you're watching from can encode it into your life for your own success today. The definition of pattern is an example for others to follow. That's what we mean by one of the laws of success. Uh, the, The NLP laws of success is success is modeled. We are looking for expert modeling. Who can we... Who can we mirror? Who can we follow? Are they doing, are they not just talking the talk, but are they actually doing the work? Uh, Today I have a phenomenal guest expert that before the show started, I said, so AJ, how long has it been that we've actually known each other? Uh, So we met the first time in 2015. It's been a few years, you know? Um, He's going to share lessons what he's learned from sleeping in his car and now being in a position to give five cars or more away. He lives in Colombia, South America, and help others achieve their dreams. And wait till you hear his story. Um, He's an incredible speaker. And I know that not just because I read his bio, I know that because I've been in rooms with him. He's an international financial and business coach who, like I said, went from sleeping in his car, being homeless, to giving over five cars away. He's now helping people become um, their own vehicles to achieve their life, the life that they want. And he currently lives in Medellin, Colombia, where he brings people, um, groups down to show them how to achieve what he calls the vacation lifestyle. So ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome AJ Vassar is here with me today. AJ, so good to have you. Hey, Brigitte, how are you? I am well. Um, For everyone that has been watching us uh, on a weekly basis, yes, my voice is a little um, raspy today, so forgive my raspiness, but you're not going to hear a whole lot of me talking. You're going to hear a whole lot of AJ talking. AJ, uh, when we met, you still lived in Atlanta. I did. I did. We, We actually met a year after I was sleeping in my car. Um, after I went through that whole ordeal, we met um, We met in Atlanta and I was uh, going through the whole process of just changing my life. And um, like you say, following success patterns and figuring out what works for me. And, you know, I think for me, before I even set a pattern that I wanted to follow, I had to realize what success was for me. Because so you I, had to define success for you. Yeah, yeah, I had to define it because I think a lot of people leave patterns. They leave clues, right? We hear that term all the time, success leaves clues. But it's like, what type of success do I want? And I was I was different. Like, I'm not, 
I'm not into shiny things. I'm not into cars. I'm very low key, you know, so it was like, okay, what pattern do I want to follow? So for me, it was just kind of finding out that pattern first, um, finding right, defining success first, and then finding that pattern that matched the success that I wanted. So that's how I came up with the vacation lifestyle. How? So I, I, I want to learn more about what made you go from being, we're going to call it homeless, mm -hmm. living in a car, to wanting to find out what you're, which success are you looking for? What, what was the transition there? What made you, there, there was some kind of, if we want to use the P word, pivotal moment, mm -hmm. right? Transitional moment that was a wake up call. I don't know. You tell us. Well, for me, it was actually a, a mentor that I had that happened before I even became uh, homeless. And you get you get you could say me being homeless was kind of not his fault, but his his guidance. Um, <laughs> it was a uh, it was my mentor in Atlanta. His name is Sam Shepard. And uh, he was he's the number one income earner and in, uh, African-American income earner in America. And he was mentoring me at the time. I, I was never a part of Primerica, but he just, I don't know, he liked me, I guess. And I remember telling him I had a business deal that it went bad. And I told him that I was going to go live with my mother in Texas and to, you know, to get back on my feet. And Sam said, no, you're not. He said, he said, no woman wants a man that runs to his mom when times get hard. And he said, you'll learn more from your car then you ever will running from your problems. Um, and then he told me he had a safe parking, a safe parking lot I could sleep in. So, um, Whoa, I want you to repeat that. Cause I think more people need to hear that, that you get to learn more. You get to, you will learn more from your car than you ever will running from your problems. Um, and, and at, at the time I was, I was almost mad because like I, I knew how much Sam made at the time, right? So at the time, Sam was making like one hundred forty thousand dollars a month. So when he told me I wasn't gonna go to my mom, I thought it was because he was gonna loan me some money, right? I thought he was gonna help me out financially, and he said no. He said I have a safe parking lot you can sleep in, and uh, I took him up on the offer because to me that was that was the pattern I realized I wanted to follow. Um, I wanted to learn on my own. And, and later on, he told me, he said, the reason I didn't give you money is because if I would have helped you out of your situation, you'd have, would've, you would have always depended on me instead yeah, of not to do it yourself. He would have totally enabled you. Yeah. Yeah. So he taught me, he taught me tough love, tough love. And, and I really appreciate it. Wow. So, so it was Sam, it was the mentorship mm -hmm. that uh, brought you to your car and then what were some of the lessons of the car? Who the, the car is where I got the majority of my lessons. Um, you know, when you're in a car, you, you have a lot of time to yourself. And yeah. it was in my car that I started realizing, you know, you start thinking back like, OK, how did I end up here? What did I do wrong? What mistakes was I making? And then I started realizing like, yo, my programming is what got me here. There's a uh, there's a book by uh, James Allen called As a Man Thinketh. And it comes from a biblical verse, you know, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And I started realizing, like, it doesn't matter how much education I get. If I don't change my programming, then my life will never change. So it was in my car that I started realizing, you know, yo, I have to change my programming in order for my life to change. And that's what that's what made the difference. That's powerful. The Just the mere fact that a person... Um, by themselves in their car, having a lot of time to kind of think and overthink things comes, comes to that realization. So there must have also been a programming, a pattern that came in from way back when you were a little kid that kind of brought more information to that scenario. What was it? Oh, yeah. So, so I grew, I, I tell people I was drugged as a child. Um, because my mother drugged me to church all the time. Like, <laughs> like I was drugged to church, right? Oh my gosh, that's Didn't funny. matter if I liked it or not. So, um, you know, it was in church where my, my programming began because, you know, you hear things like it's easier for a rich man to get in that. I mean, it's easier for a, a camel to get through an eye of a needle than a rich man to get into heaven and money is the root of all evil. And, you know, so 
I didn't realize how much those things were programming me. And mm-hmm. I remember one day, I, one one of the nights I was in my car, I uh, it, it started with jingles. It started with jingles, right? So I was thinking like, like a good neighbor. And I was like, stay for him is there. <laughs> You know, and it's like, bah, 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 I'm loving it. Then it was like, AJ, how do you know these things? Right. Mm-hmm. I put you down and oh. talk to you jingles. And I was like, nobody. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was like, nobody had to because you were being programmed your entire life by outside forces. Right. So then the programming went from that to, OK, what's my program about money? So then it came. Right. It takes money to make. Right. Money doesn't grow on. Right, Freeze, yeah. all right, Evil. all rich people, oh, all of those. Too, right? So, all of those, and I'm like, yo, I know all of these verbatim. And I started realizing if my programming tells me that all rich people are going to hell, and I believe that, then I've been sabotaging all the riches that I have because I don't want to go to hell. And it was then that I started, I started really like attacking all of my program. I started questioning everything, everything, because I had to start attacking my programming. And I think the first step to attacking your programming is to ask yourself, how am I programmed? And be honest about it, right? And and you know what? There's really good news in that because when you are becoming aware of da, 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 and mm-hmm. you know, all of the jingles, then you can also replace them with something that is more beneficial to you. So to every programming, there's a deprogramming or a counter programming. Mm-hmm. And, that, and, and that's exactly what I did. I just started using counter programming to uh, to change how I wanted to think about life. How I wanted to think about myself and and what I wanted from life. And, you know, I, I realized that I, I'm not like I said, I'm, I'm just a normal dude. I, I didn't, it was certain things I didn't want to do. And the success patterns that I had seen showed me that success was only this way. And I was like, yo, I don't, my life doesn't have to be like that. I'm a laid back guy. I, I want to stay this way. And um, I remember I took a, I had a speaking engagement in Trinidad and Tobago. And that that's what changed my life. Um, so I go to Trinidad and Tobago. I speak, of course, I'm staying in the resorts. But I always get a local to take me to the like the regular areas, like where right, normal people live. And I remember going and I was thinking like, yo, I thought I grew up in poverty and I did. not mm-hmm. Right. I saw poverty. Mm-hmm. But what struck me was, is that they were happier than all the people that I knew with Benzes and BMWs and multimillion dollar houses. And I said, that's what I want. That's mm. successful. It's freedom. It's was was that the time that you already left uh, lived in Colombia, or were no. you still in Atlanta? I'm still in Atlanta. Did, was that a, a another transformational moment for you to take the the leap to go to Colombia? Tell us more about what took you to Colombia. So I was um, I was living in the states. Um, I had went through my homeless process, and um, for the next what, two years. So I was homeless in 2014, 2016. I decided, you know what? When I was homeless and I didn't think I had anything, I still had a car. So for Christmas, I want to give away a car, right? Like I want to give away what I had. And, you know, it just so happened. I I was pretty good at saving to where I was able to give away two cars for Christmas. So I was like, oh, this is cool. So I'm going through that process. And from there, I was I was just asked to come speak in uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I hadn't decided to leave yet. I, I was just like, oh, okay, cool. I'll go speak. This is, you know, this is a cool experience. And when I went down there and I seen how happy they were and how how they didn't have any, you know, like they I won't say they didn't have anything, but they had very little. They had mm-hmm. very little, but they were so happy. And I said, that's what I want in life. I, I want the happiness, right, over the things. And then I realized I wanted to teach people how to use their lives as a vehicle to get to their freedom. So at that moment, when you were starting to think about moving away, was it immediately Colombia? Yeah, of course I'm moving to Colombia. Or So so this is the crazy part. People, people they, they still think I'm crazy. So I had visited 10 countries before I chose Medellin, Colombia. 
Medellin, Colombia wasn't even a country I'd ever visit. Like it wasn't, I'd never visited Colombia before I moved. Never. I, Are you I literally, serious? one of my friends knew that I was looking at countries and she said, Hey, I think you would like this country. And I was like, really? And she said, yeah, watch this video. And I watched the video and I was like, yo, that seems like, <laughs> that seems dope. And my whole thought process was, if I don't like it, I'll move in six months. You're not a tree. You can move. Yeah, I'm like, yo, I don't, if I don't like it, I'll move. So I had never visited. I didn't know anything. All Everything was done off research. And I've been here four years. Um, four years you've already been there. Yeah. And, and one of the things, one of the reasons why I tell people, I think you should face your demons um, because my, my boogeyman was homelessness, right? Mm -hmm. um, I When I finished college, I immediately opened up my first business, which was a barbershop. And one of my uncles told me that I was going to be homeless because I wasn't using my degree, right? So that's that, always- Hello, good. that was a program. Yeah, yeah. So, But that was, that was always my boogeyman in the back of my mind. I'm going to be homeless. I'm going to be homeless. And every time I came close to being homeless, I would move a roommate in or I would- Right. I would do something to make sure that I wasn't homeless. And um, this time when I, I faced that situation in Atlanta, instead of going, you know, like I told you, instead of going to my mother, Sam told me he had a safe parking lot I could sleep in. And uh, I was like, cool, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out in my car. And I did. And you so, did. Yeah. So when people ask me about moving to Medellin, it wasn't scary for me because homelessness was my boogeyman. You, right. Yeah, there was nothing. There was nothing for you to be afraid of because yeah. it, it was already stepping into an an unknown known, right? If, if you will. Now, were there in your family? Because we often look at family first. Where are you know? What are we? What are we watching? Who are we modeling? Who's who's kind of the trailblazer? So was it very known in your family just to, you know, pack your bags and travel all around the world and see, you know, country after country after country? No, nobody in my family does that. I'm the only one. You're the only one. The only one. Yep. And, and because of that, and this is something that I teach people, because of that, during my time of transitioning from my programming from my family, I had to use what I call limited association. Tell me more about that. So... If anybody knows me, they know my mother is my heart. That is that is yes. like my mother is my, my heart. I will do anything for my mother, right? For my, and to show you how close we are, for my 37th birthday, I actually bought my mother a car. Yes, right? I that's remember how, that. That's how close we are. But during my transition of changing my programming, I stopped talking to my mother as much because my programming came from my mother. Mm -hmm. So I had to limit my association so that I could change my mindset, so that I could change my life. And because I did that, my mother is now reaping the benefits of me doing that, right? So, um, but that, it was tough because a lot of us, right, we we don't realize that our environment has shaped us more than than almost anything that, that we've ever been a part of. Um, there's a saying, more is caught than is taught. Yep. Right. Or as Buckminster Fuller says, environment is stronger than willpower. It is. It is. So, so you have you you have siblings, right? I'm the oldest of eight children by my mother. Eight. Yep. So there are, there are a few nieces and nephews in the family. A bunch of them. Uh, I would imagine so. Okay. Yes. Just if everyone just had one. Right. That's, right. That 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 that's already a handful. More than a hand. Two handfuls. Do you think that they look up to their uncle AJ, and that you have totally blown the glass ceiling and expanded their awareness. 100%. Um, it, it's the way they brag to their friends about, oh, my uncle live in South America, right? It's like, <laughs> they haven't even been here. And they, but that's their, like, that's their bragging thing. Like I got an uncle that live in South America, and, right? So um, just to know that they can now, right? And, and I tell them all, hey, you can come visit me anytime you want. Most of them are still young. I have uh, two that are graduating next year. Um, so I'm sure that the trips will start with them uh, coming to visit me. But, you know, I do believe that just from seeing um, just the exposure, I think just the exposure of knowing that you can yeah. just changes everything. Yeah, that that 
not just hearing you talk about it, but you, they actually seeing that you're doing it, that right. you're doing it daily. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it doesn't take impact. what most people think, right? Because a lot of times you think, oh, I have to be a millionaire and I have to, you know, do, and I'm like, nah, it doesn't take that. Right. And and then they can actually talk to somebody who's done it. And, and they call me and ask me questions from time to time. And, you know, all, all everyone that I talk to is like, I want to come visit you. And I'm like, no, <laughs> nah, like, go get your passport first. Right. <laughs> and that then you that would be one thing that they would need. Yeah. Um, Oh my gosh. So th there's, there's so many more questions I have around this. Well, first of all, we have some comments from Paquita. Do you remember Paquita, right? She was, she must've been in the same room when we met. I was the, I was the assistant trainer for mm -hmm. Harvecker's um, Secrets of a Millionaire Mind here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I met Paquita yep, there. Yep. yep that's, that's where we nice. met. Exactly. Um, it's just interesting that Paquita's here and she's, you know, sharing with us Beautiful. here in the chat and, and, and you're here. Um, and she, you know, she's sharing with us some, some of the gratitude that she has of people really modeling, looking out for them and looking out for someone, AJ is not monetary because that would be enabling. That's what I heard you say. Yeah. Yeah, and that's 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 the one of the biggest reasons why I stopped giving cars away. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it, it wasn't for the fact that I don't want to give. I'm a giver by heart, right? I, I mean, I've been giving six cars away. It's just that I realized once I gave them a car, I didn't teach them the vehicle that allowed me to get the car. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the most important part. Is right. I don't just just how Sam did me. I want to do that for other people. I want to show them that like you're your hero. I don't, I'm not the hero, right? I'm not the hero in your story. You are. Yeah. So let me, let me show you just the training that you need to become the hero that you always knew you were. Yeah. Cause that's, that, that's even more powerful. Yeah. That that's the, that's the win for me is when you can do it for yourself. Well, that's the whole, that's the whole strategy and pattern of, you know, don't give a man fish, teach mm -hmm. a man how to fish. Yeah. That's, it. that's the whole that's the whole strategy. Now, you've been in Colombia for four years now. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you've gone through the pandemic like we have. Um, how did you keep sane through or certain through this uncertain times? I think one of my one of my best gifts is that I'm overly optimistic. Um, anything bad that happens to me, I always tell myself this is just going to make a good story. Right. I, I look at my life like a movie and I'm like, yo, this is going to make an excellent part of my story. Um, so you can't have a great story without having great trials. Oh. There there has never been. Period. A great story uh, we can stop right here because you have heard it all now, you guys. Period. <laughs> yeah. So so that's how I look at everything. I want a great story. So I'm, I know I'm going to have to endure great trials. So that's how I dealt with it. I was like, oh, this is going to make a great part of my story. Right. Um, and and I, I let myself go through the emotions. Um, mm -hmm. I don't hide them. Yo, this sucks. <laughs> I don't like it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so hold on. So what you're saying is accepting, but not needing to like it. No, nah, no. Nah, I, I love being honest and saying I don't like stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that to me, that's real. That's how I'm, that's how I'm authentic with myself. I try. I do my best not to lie to me. Mm. Right. And I don't I don't positive think me. I'm like, no, nah, this suck. Right. But just because it suck doesn't mean we're not going to get through it. It just sucks. Mm -hmm. So now, OK, cool. So how can we get through it knowing that it's like this? And it's like, hey, everybody's going through it as well. Cool. Right. Or when I was when I was homeless, it was like, yo, you're not the first person to be homeless. You won't be the last. Cool. Right. So yeah. it, it's, I'm always I'm always trying to ask myself better questions mm -hmm. um, to to get better outcomes. I do believe the quality of your life is dependent on the quality of the questions that you ask yourself. Amen. I'm getting ready for a coaching certification that I'm teaching for the next three days. And that that's my opener. 
That is absolutely what you just said is my opener and you're dead on right. Yeah. So that once I'm honest with myself, then I just ask, start asking myself qu better questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Pa Paquita, Paquita has some great aha moments. I love it. Paquita. Thanks. <laughs> thanks a little Tanya for watching you guys and, and, and sharing uh, s such beautiful comments. Um, looking back, looking back at, Little AJ growing up in Texas. I grew up in Alton, Illinois, a little town no one has probably heard of. Okay, Illinois. All right, yep. even better. Um, little AJ growing up with eight siblings. What would you say was an ongoing ritual or habit that have led you to where you are today? Could be something from when from those imprint phases when you were little or something that you learned from the car or anywhere you know, in between? You know what? It's something that I actually hated. And it was something that we used to do on Thanksgiving. Um, and we didn't do it every Thanksgiving. I think we only, and because we started doing, I started getting older. Um, but my mother would actually make us go feed the homeless on Thanksgiving. And I did not like it because Thanksgiving is probably my favorite holiday because i'm a bigger guy and i love to eat and i i was ready to eat i didn't want to feed them i wanted to feed myself and i remember the first time we did it um it it, it changed my life just because i realized how much i had even though we didn't grow up with much um and because of that that's how i became a giver um so even when i own my barbershop on Thanksgiving, I would actually open up my barbershop and cut people's hair for free. Whoever wanted a haircut, I would cut their hair for free because that's the foundation that my mother made because she let us know, even though we don't have a lot, we, you know, when you serve people that have less than you, it makes you very grateful for the small things that you do have. And then you, you learn how to take pride in them and how to multiply them. And, um, yeah, it was that, it was my mother showing me that, uh, the little things. The little things so, make the biggest difference. So your your mother drugged you not just to church, but to soup kitchen and oh, all of that. Yes, my mother drugged me everywhere. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mama. Okay. Yes. Big shout out yes. to to uh Mrs. Vassar and yeah. thank you for for pouring in such greatness into one person. AJ, you've written not just one book. Mm -hmm. How many? I've written I've written two books. I'm working on a third now. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm I think writing is my thing. I just haven't embraced it. Okay, okay. Well, it's time to embrace that. Yes. And I think and I think you brought a gift for our for our viewers and listeners as well. What's the yes. gift? So I have a um, my gift is a book called Root and Rise: The Scary Growth Process to Success. And I wrote this book because. Um, once we reach success, I think a lot of people think that it's supposed to go a certain way and it's not. So I actually take them through like the, what it's really like to be successful and what, what that process is like going through it. Um, I think one of my favorite quotes in the book is the, the scariest part about being planted is that it's the same process as being buried. And I think Ooh. a lot of us, we, we abort our mission of being planted because it does feel like we're being buried. Oh, that's powerful. Yeah. That is absolutely powerful. So people uh, get your book now message AJ on Facebook. Here is AJ's Facebook, facebook.com slash AJ Vassar freedom, A J Vassar V A S S A R freedom. All one word. Follow him on Facebook, sh send him a quick message and say, hey, AJ, love the show, would love to have your book. AJ is a giver. Um, if AJ can help you, I know that you can find that out through a message on Facebook as well. Get with AJ. Um, you're not going to regret it. I know that for a fact. You're going to absolutely love it and get so much out of it. So get your book. AJ, Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here today. Be my guest from here in Atlanta, Georgia, the old home over to the new home in Columbia. I appreciate it. It is a pleasure. Thank you. Guys, tune in again next week. 
Same time, same place for the Success Pattern Show, Tuesday, 1.30 Pacific Time, 4.30 Eastern Time. Until then, ciao and bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to the Success Pattern Show at www.thesuccesspatternshow.com. My name is Brigitte Hufelet.